Hi everyone, uh, welcome, thanks for joining me. I'll be your guest host for ten tonight, and my name is Michael, and I'm here uh, with the lovely Daisy Joplin. <laughs> Daisy, please tell us uh, about your next show. I went to hear this local fabulous youth orchestra, the Westchester Putnam Youth Symphony, which is conducted by Cheryl Havens, who's amazing. And um, a lot of those kids knew about the work I was doing because it's kind of making classical music cool and mm -hmm. fun. So the kids really love that and it inspires them um, to practice and everything. And so they knew about me. So somehow we got a meeting. Oh, that's right, yeah. Don Bennett, fabulous guy, introduced Cheryl and I. And we said, let's do a collaboration. And I think I had the idea. I thought, collaborating, okay, what could we do? Let's commission a composer to write a concerto mm -hmm. for the orchestra, me, and my rock band. Because okay. then the kids can be surrounded by, you know, the sound, which is so much fun. I mean, the reason why I play rock music is because it lets you feel like you're ripping open from the classical music boundaries, which are unbelievable discipline, which is great for every kid. Yeah. But you know, you're practicing, everything has to be perfect. And by the time you're living in the 21st century, you're playing along with thousands of other violinists, the same piece. So, you know, it's kind of like this rigorous training of perfection and not a really powerful focus on innovation. Mm -hmm. Whilst rock music is all yeah, about busy. innovation, rip it open, you know, just basically go wild on stage and create something fantastic. But it's not like you're practicing five million hours on every bar of the piece. So let me ask you a question. How is it for a classical musician as yourself uh, to even start playing rock music? How does that happen? So, I mean, actually, it specifically happened to me because I moved from Europe to America, mm. to New York. First of all, New York City, and now the city of Peekskill. And, um, you know, all these people are like, you play classical music, right. And most of them were like, anyway, can we carry on just, you know, sm smoking our hot dogs or whatever? They don't yeah. really give a flying yeah, it's hard torpedo for them. <laughs> about classical music, as few do. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, I want to, you know, connect with all these amazing people I'm meeting. I want to connect emotionally with music that they love. I want to play shows that they come to and they just totally, totally dig it. Mm. So what nice. am I going to do? Well, I better start by playing some rock music. And then one of the guys on my team, Rick Wietzma, amazing guy, 25 years in uh, the music business with um, Warner Brothers and he was like there's this great rock song from The Who who honestly I didn't really know before I came to America even though they're an English band and this song is not only an absolute classic and everybody who knows and loves it but it has this big violin solo in it and the song is Baba O'Reilly often known as Teenage Wasteland so I was like great let's do it and I got an arrangement done of it and we performed it at the first Paramount show I did two years ago. And um, it was absolutely incredible. I mean, I played this whole show. People love the show. I'm doing like kind of rock arrangements of classical music. So they're already digging it. They're like, wow, I didn't really think I was interested in classical music, but I'm loving this. I did my fun things. I did the kids things. I did uh, some great gypsy violin music. And then I took out my electric violin and I started playing The Who. And I mean, the audience who up till then had thought, amazing, I can't believe I'm having the best time in a violin show. They just went, she's playing Teenage Wasteland. And they just ripped. I mean, they were like screaming, you know, my band's yeah. playing the ass off. I'm playing my electric violin. I'm jumping around the stage and they're like. Yeah, I can imagine that. that... It was an amazing feeling. And yes, that, yeah. that wish that I had to mm. really connect with everybody happened. And that show, that, that first show you were just uh, referring to was also in the Paramount Theatre. Yes. 
that's so, interesting. And that was also, that first show kind of changed my whole life, actually. Mm -hmm. Because I just moved to Peak School and I'm really in love with Peak School right now. So it was great to move here. And that show kind of made my feeling of suddenly really being here and being part of the community. And it also introduced me to the idea of playing with kids. So we got Paramount, we got rock and roll, we got kids, we got violin. Sounds like a crazy mix. It's an amazing mix. And are we going to expect all of that in, in this upcoming show? Yes, in June 9th, by the way, 7 p.m. June 9th, 7 p.m. So, yeah, and... Um, in the new Paramount, right? In the new Paramount. That must be exciting as well, right? It Re is exciting, Returning yeah. Returning there. We're so happy it's opening again, you know. Yeah. It's been these six to nine months of, like, we really hope it'll open. And um, this new group of people, the Red House Entertainment, who've come in to run it, are doing an amazing job. They've got a lot of hurdles to jump over. <laughs> so they're still like, every day is like, oh, we've got to solve this problem, you know. Yeah. But um, I keep telling them there are thousands of people out there who are so, so, so grateful and thrilled at what they're doing. So, me included. This theater is beautiful. This theater is beautiful. And we, you know, guys, you got to come to the show. All you guys out there, you got to come to the show. Um, on June 9th because Definitely first sounds. of all we want to support these kids support these the kids, kids are playing yeah. the amazing music which the orchestra has put a year of work into to raise the funds to bring this composer that we finally chose on a composer that I know really well mm -hmm. so from my point of view a biased decision but we did go online and listen to composers all the ones we could think of that we know of who are writing now and like really the top people in the whole world we, could, we knew we could ask anybody, and we chose this guy because his music is extraordinary in that it's totally beautiful. I mean, I cry every time I hear it, practically. Um, and he has an amazing ability to write for kids. You've got to know how to do that. And to write convincingly all these different styles of music. And he kind of jumps from one to the other and makes it seamless. And <clears throat> actually, so his ability is amazing and his talent and his understanding of what I can do. And somehow we're similar because I also have trained over 20 years, you know, maybe 15 years, this talent to jump from style to style and feel completely into whatever I'm playing. Um, so the music does that and it's, it's an extraordinary and for me really thrilling, totally thrilling thing that we're going to be performing his music here in Peekskill. You know, he lives in Austria, he writes for the Vienna Philharmonic, he writes for amazing orchestras around the world mm -hmm. and he's written specifically for us. We're going to hear this music on June 9th, world premiere. In fact, we've already got concerts of this piece in Switzerland, Norway, Mexico, and other places will come up. So, you know, everybody so, here has the chance of a lifetime. So we're all invited to come also with our families, with our kids. It's, it's gonna be something Absolutely. that everyone should see, right? Yeah. That sounds exciting. Actually, it was kind of cool because on my first concert, you know, people really thought, well, we're coming to hear this violinist because our kid is playing or, you know, somebody told us to, <laughs> or we saw her playing in a restaurant that kind of looked fun, but we don't, you know, really know yeah. what we're in for. And I got this deluge, I mean, amazing amount, maybe like 50 emails, personal le handwritten letters, phone calls from people just saying that, that was the best show I've ever heard. And are people really saying my daughter who's eight came and my mother who's 80 was mm. there. and everybody had the time of their life so this is it's difficult to describe it's difficult to explain yeah. but it's it something... sounds like it sounds like it's also something that's bridging a gap between generations in a way Absolutely. if i if i understand what you're saying and it yes. sounds very exciting why don't you tell us a little bit about the venue itself i mean it's the reopening of this the... theater you know i can tell you that um we had this date fixed a year ago and it was you know, with 60 kids and 120 parents and all their families and whoever, it's not easy to find a new date. So we knew we have to stick to this date. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when the Paramount didn't open, we looked around at other venues and there are a couple of other beautiful venues, um, kind of in the area, 45 minutes yeah. away or something. 
but um, nothing is quite like the Paramount in that it's right here. Hmm. It's extraordinarily beautiful. I mean, all the people who are listening to this probably know the theater, you know, really well. Um, it has a fantastic sound and light system, and we're going to have a light design, actually, especially made for the whole program, lighting mm. design, by Ken Smith, Kendall Smith, <coughs> who does amazing shows around the world. Like, I, I can't believe we've got him. You know, we've got these amazing, amazing people. And, um, <laughs> and this show is going to be extraordinary. So the theatre is wonderful. The theatre is something to come just to be, to support, to support the new guys who are opening it. Yeah. And to come and be in the city of Peekskill, which has incredible restaurants and, you know, come and hang out here. Hopefully the weather will be gorgeous. It's a Sunday. Yeah. And the Enjoy the place. And the community that is such a warm community. Absolutely. Yeah, it yes. is. It's an amazing community. How long have you been uh, here now, part of this community? You said it three was years. three years. Yeah. Is it exciting? It's great. You know, um, I mean, it must be nicer than living in the noisy city of actual When I first New came York. here, I just first came here because I met my husband, by the way, in the theater. Another reason why this theater is great. We met Another in the theater. Uh, I came to marry this beautiful man, and um, I didn't know anything about the city. I just ca the, the, the town, you know, I just came here and had my tour. I mean, I'm touring around the world, so I'm here just a part of my time. And I was in the city a lot. All my work was in the city. All my friends were in the city. Um, and I gradually met people here, and now I really feel like it's my home. And now I go to the city and I'm like, this is amazing, but how great I can go back to the, you know, beautiful countryside by the river. And yeah, it, I feel really blessed to be here, and it's a great lifestyle, so it's beautiful. And talking about countryside, uh, did, you grow up, uh, did you grow up near the countryside when you, was, when you were a child? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Did, did that did. inspire you to start playing violin? What What actually inspired you to start with? Yeah. Well, with I violin? have an amazingly musical family. I mean, yeah. I have this beautiful aunt who is my godmother, and I'm really still really close to her. And she was a professional violinist. Mm. So my mom said, I don't remember. I was three when I started. Oh. But my mom said every day I was like, Mom, when can I start learning the violin? When so it was your choice. Yeah, but because of her, you know, because of my aunt, I mean, I was yes. like, I just think I was really, you know, loved her so much. I just wanted to probably emulate her. Mm -hmm. organized these music camps um, so my whole childhood was filled with playing music with other children and yes I lived in the countryside you know so it's great to be back in nature but um, it's something that I feel really passionate about it's like giving other children the chance to have an amazing musical you know education yeah. and it's something I've talked about for two years and it's like very easy to talk about it and much more difficult to really make it happen as I found out yeah. but I'm moving towards uh, starting a program, just because my program director, Donna Mickelson, lives in Beacon, we'll start there, but we'll definitely come to Peace Girl. And um, okay. Michael, yeah. now, I have some feeling that, um, you know, you might just maybe in some way be interested in being involved in this program. What do you do, actually? Well, <laughs> apart from being a... You know, a, a great a, TV host. <laughs> a, a, a guest host and trying to support the community. I try to find other ways to support other communities. And I do that all around the world. But other than that, I'm kind of what you would call a rhythm specialist. I'm a beatboxer right. and I play percussion and I do so on stage in music concert and in theater. And uh, it's actually true. I'm. I'm very interested in being part of, of this project that you're just uh, mentioning. Yeah. That's going to bring uh, music as something that's way more accessible here uh, for the communities. Right. And uh, yeah, so I'm, the I'm actually thrilled to do it. Yes. That's so amazing. We're so thrilled to have you. 
So the program's called Ovation. Ovation. And we plan to start in January 2014. Mm -hmm. Like 30 kids. So we'll tell us a little bit about that. What's, what makes Ovation unique for kids? And I'm sure, uh, and I'm sure that people who will arrive to this next your next concert yeah. uh, will kind of will be able to imagine what their kids gonna be doing. Are they gonna learn classical violin mixed with rock music, like what you're Absolutely. doing? Or yes, okay, please tell us. So the yeah. idea. You know, we've got a whole structure, a whole mm -hmm. curriculum put together. That's what takes a long time, and the whole funding takes a long time. But the idea is that, um, first of all, we have, for 50% of the kids, full scholarship. So wow. it's absolutely free. You know, it's really important to have it available to any child from any yeah. background. And secondly, um, the program starts off with kids working on musicianship. So before mm -hmm. you even take an instrument in your hand, you might want to learn how to hear the different notes of the scale, yeah. how to get the feeling of rhythm, you know. Mm -hmm. So we give them a whole, a six month whole kind of background on general music training so that they can already hear the notes of the scale sing and they can pick up the violin and, and they'll have some kind of body training so that this whole like dichotomy of what you're doing to yes. play the violin, for example, and many other instruments, it's the same. You have two hands going at different There's kind of directions. Of coordination involved. Yeah. So we'll, we'll give a basic training to them and they're going to learn in a group. Mm -hmm. So the second aspect is that they really have a fantastic time playing, having fun with their friends. They make friends. Mm -hmm. It's the place they can come. And we're going to have the course um, three nights a week and Saturday. So it'll be four times a week with one hour over. In fact, it might be three or two nights a week and then maybe two hours on Saturday. So it's a commitment that yeah. it means that you really get to know the people. You have a place you can come regularly, which is a wonderful, fun, creative and very safe environment. Um, you know, really loving and a place where the kids can just really, really express themselves and learn how to do something amazing. And then after the first six months, they can choose an instrument. Um, and then gradually, they get the opportunity to, yes, learn how to really have a great technique on whichever instrument they choose. Mm -hmm. And we'll start with violin, viola, violin, cello and guitar. But we'll add all of the instruments as the years go on, the program yeah. builds up. We'll have a full orchestra of instruments. Um, but they, they choose their instrument, and then as their training starts, yes, their technique is worked on, but also we want them right from the start to really feel comfortable with their own creativity. So they learn how to start writing their own music, how to start improvising. And then gradually, after a few years, they'll start learning, if they want to, how to play hip hop on the violin, mm -hmm. how to play salsa on the violin, Irish folk music, whatever style they want to focus on. So that these are really well-rounded children. Sure. They don't have to become musicians, you know, children. Yeah, yeah. But if they want to become musicians, they can do whatever they want. And um, this, is, this is our idea, you know, for people to be able to become you know, really dedicated and flexible and aware and happy human beings. Yes. <laughs> I think this is a, a really inspiring approach. And I want to say from my part as someone who I'm, I'm really looking forward to being part of this. Great. Uh, one point that really inspired me, for example, is that when you told me about this program, you presented it as a program that's going to commit itself to the kids rather than just, oh, we need kids that are committing to our program because if not, we're not. Please tell us more about the program itself committing to kids. Yeah. And that makes it unique uh, from other programs which basically don't do it. Yeah, so... How, how long is this program? I mean, you know, we, we've um, got a lot of our ideas from a really, really well run and very successful music program in Los Angeles mm -hmm. called The Harmony Project, um, started by Dr. Margaret Martin, who is incredible. And 
this program, which has won two citizens presidential awards, like they're you know they're just doing great. They've got fifteen hundred mm-hmm. kids right now. They have they they are just there to help us, you know, with every kind of aspect of how to start a music program, including committing for ten years to each child who comes into the program in Los Angeles. They come in around age seven or eight, so it means they're committing to them throughout the whole of their school. Mm-hmm. And it's the child has to sign a paper to say they're going to stay in high school. They can't drop out of school if they want to carry on with the music program. And the parents have to commit to really helping the children, and uh, the child has to commit to practicing every day, you know, and sign a contract. <laughs> and um, they start helping as mentors the next children in the year below them. So there's a lot of aspects that we really take on. And we're, we're also going to start children when they're younger, like five or six years mm-hmm. old, just to give them that head start. So we will commit to their whole school life, which means that, you know, we have to, that's why it's take time to get all the funding together to really do that. Yes. But it's very important for us um, to know that this child, if they want to really, you know, have this program throughout their childhood in whichever way they want mm-hmm. to use it, they can, if they really want to become good, it's here for them, you know, because it's for one year of learning on the violin, for example, on the violin, you know, you, you can't learn that much. Yes. You, you need a lot of years to really get of to course. that point where you feel of really, course. really, you know, and you so, can do anything. So if I, if I understand correctly, in a sense, the Ovation project itself and, yeah. and you as a, as a musician and in generally, your approach is to try to do the thinking, the long-term thinking and planning for the kids and let them enjoy just the fruits of what you've accomplished. Right. right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, it's a reward to be able to do it for them also. As every kid, I mean, having the kids in my concert has always been so thrilling. You know, it's something that's become part of my life. So I look forward to that. Michael, now, yes. so what, what kind of program are you going to start for the kids? You know, tell me a little bit about it. Well, basically, I would like to do everything that you said uh, that you mentioned regarding uh, music, but with rhythm, I would give them uh, first of all the uh, tools to understand what rhythm is and how to regard um, musical structure. Right. That's really a necessity for rhythm, and then also any of the skills that I perform with, which are uh, instrumental percussion, which is the most normal one. Then I go through body percussion, I go through beatbox, and uh, yeah, and, a mi- and we also go through a mixture of all these things. So, uh, so exciting. And apparently you're going to be doing like a TED talk quite soon. Where's that going to be? When's it going to be? When, yes, where can I'm, we watch a, it? I'm, a, I'm going to actually, this Saturday, I'm going to speak in, uh, in a town right next to Paris, uh, uh-huh. France. Right. And it's uh, a TEDx. Uh, event that's oriented, youth oriented, so it's called the TEDx Youth, and it's titled The World Differently. And uh, yes, I'm going to present uh, kind of my story and how I ended up uh, um, doing such a wide array of, of mixture of things and try to, uh, well, hopefully I'll inspire them to also mix everything in their lives. Yeah. That's amazing. So, you know, some people might not know what beatboxing is. Do you want to give us uh, an idea what it could be? Yes, of course. Well, basically, beatboxing is uh, mimicking, mimicking any rhythm sound uh, with your mouth and vocal. And uh, yeah, let's just go for it. <laughs> One, two, 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 the three,
So I just thought I'm going to play his little Irish ditty. Mm hmm. Okay. It's called polka.com. Polka See if you can do something to it. Thank <laughs> you. 